she was beautiful, with an even more beautiful voice. She was a singer when she met my father. My father was older, very powerful, he was a wealthy man. I was the product of their short love affair. Left. And I was all my mother had when my father left. In 16th century Europe, growing up poor was hard enough. Imagine how much harder it would be without a father. I was probably born between 1545 and 1547. My birth was a subject my father did not want to talk about and a secret my mother tried to keep. Although my father was not in my life, I may have been on his conscience. In 1554, I was taken from my mother. My father asked Luis de Quijada and his wife, Magdalena de Oloa, to take care of me. We moved to the castle in Villa Garcia de Campos. I was then given a very good education. However, no one told me who my father was, and I was never allowed to see my mother again. My father wrote a codicil in 1554. I had a natural child of one unmarried woman named Geronimo. Yes, my name was Geronimo, a fatherless boy, born in Austria. That was the day when my father first acknowledged me. Although my father's health was in steady decline, he did not wish to see me, nor allowed anyone to tell me about him. In the summer of 1558, my father had asked Luis de Quijada to move closer to him. I saw him a few times during the three months before his death in September of 1558. My father liked the boy who resembled him, both in look and personality. He never allowed anyone to share the secret that he kept since the day I was born. In his last will, he acknowledged me and gave me the name of John. He wanted me to serve God. So he planned for me to enter the clergy to pursue an ecclesiastical career. Before the details of my father's death were made public, people started to speculate about me. But my guardian, De Quijada, denied everything. As he had expressed instruction from my father to keep me and my existence a strict secret. In 1559, I was brought forth to King Philip of Spain. He asked me if I knew who my father was, and I told him I did not. The king then embraced me and told me that we had the same father. We were brothers. The king was kind to me, although he made sure I was not addressed as Your Highness, as that was a form for royals, and I was not. But I was given the allowance of 15,000 ducats per year, and I was allowed to continue living with my guardians. I became close to my nephew, Prince Carlos, and Alessandro Farnese, Prince of Parma. Although I had a humble childhood, my, my families accepted me like one of their own. Although my father planned for me to become a priest, my hope is to be just like him. But I wasn't born to the throne, so I had to fight for my glory. I asked to join the Navy in 1565 when the Ottoman Empire attacked the island of Malta, but King Philip would not allow it. Maybe he thought I was too young. Perhaps he felt that it was his duty to protect me from my father. In 1558, I had pretty much everything anyone could have wished for. My father gave me the life. He also gave me a name and planned a life for me. My half-brother King Philip embraced a young boy he never met. He let me grow up with his son and daughter, even though I am the son of a singer. King Philip was like a father to me. I thought his son, Don Carlos, the heir apparent to Spanish crown, was the luckiest person alive. However, Prince Carlos told me about his plan to flee Spain. He offered me the kingdom of Naples if I helped him acquire the ship that he needed. He trusted me. But I couldn't let him rebel against his father and ruin his life. So I told King Philip, and I stopped the plot. I did what I had to do to, to protect them. I did what my conscience told me, but Don Carlos never forgave. In 1568, my brother allowed me to take charge of the Spanish naval fleet. It was the beginning of my career. Many people considered me the hero of Europe, but they didn't know how I spent years learning logistics and drills. I worked closely with my advisors and fought with my soldiers side by side. 
When I led my troops to victory on the siege of Galera in February of 1570, that same year I was shot in the head in Saran while, the, while my guardian, that I loved and respected, Luis de Quijada, died in battle. You see, I won battles through winning the hearts of my soldiers. They loved their commander because I risked my life right alongside theirs. In May of 1570, I had negotiated a peace with Al-Habakwi. Then the War of Cyprus and the Battle of Lepanto sealed my position in history. In October of 1571, as the Commander-in-Chief of the Holy League Armada, my fleet of 207 galleys won over the Turkish fleet of 300. People knew how brave I was, but they did not know why. I thought I already had everything. Why did I risk my life in every battle? People didn't understand how it felt to be a son that a father wouldn't recognize. A son his father was embarrassed about. I wish one day I could have a kingdom of my own. A kingdom I get through victories. That dream almost came true in 1572. After the victory over Turks, the delegation of Albanians offered me their throne. My brother King Philip told me to decline the offer. Then I was offered the hand of Queen Elizabeth, but my brother told me it was a bad idea, so I declined that as well. Actually, I had my eyes on another queen living in England. The imprisoned Queen Mary of Scots. I never met Queen Mary, but I remembered seeing her portrait during her marriage negotiation with my nephew, Don Carlos. She was so beautiful. And then I learned about the unfair charges against her and the harsh prison that she had to endure. King, asked, King Philip had asked me to put out the uprising in the Netherlands. A difficult task, almost impossible to accomplish. So I asked him to promise to help me and the troops to invade England after my victory in the Netherlands. I told her that I wished to free and marry Queen Mary of Scots. And King Philip gave me his word. While in the Netherlands, I pleaded to Queen Elizabeth to release Queen Mary as my wife. She refused. And then I got sick. I died on October 1st, 1578, when I was only 33. Life was a journey. Although I did not save my queen nor have a kingdom of my own, I accomplished many dreams that I had set out to do. My short journey. I, John Juan of Austria, the illegitimate son of Emperor Charles V, was the man who saved Europe.